welcome to RPTV Weekly News Show. My name is Murphy Brown, and my co-hosts are Fred Alvarado and Jabin Hawk. We present news that impacts on Regent Park and the surrounding areas. In this episode, we present the following news for the week of February 22nd to February 28th. SDP forms subcommittee task group to facilitate review of its structure. The Employment and Economic Development Working Group of the SDP ends the employment coordination position. Report of the February 15, 2022 Regent Park Executive Directors Meeting. Moss Park subway construction to take seven to 10 years. Toronto City Council has approved a 14.99 billion dollars operating budget for 2022. COVID-19 and vaccination update, events and jobs in Regent Park. SDP forms subcommittee task group to facilitate the review of its structure. The Regent Park Social Development Plan is a community-wide initiative aimed at building social cohesion and inclusion. The plan revolves around four priority areas, each represented by a working committee. The four working groups are communication, safety, community building and employment, and economic development. The body tasked with coordinating the four working groups is the SDP Planning Committee. The committee comprises all the other members of the working groups. Over the past few weeks, the SDP planning table has been undertaking a review of its role and purpose. This review has been led by Ismail Afra, the TCHC chair of the SDP. Initially, the review was limited to the SDP planning committee, but in conducting this exercise, it became clear that members of the community have been left behind in the discussion that did not understand the language and terms being used. It also became clear that the whole structure of the SDP, including the roles and responsibilities of the working groups, and the SDP stakeholders table requires a review. At the meeting of February 17th, it was decided that a new subcommittee be formed to facilitate the review of the SDP structure. Jermal Humphrey, a staff member from TCHC, agreed to help organize a separate process for reviewing the SDP structure. Joel Klassen from the Young Street Mission agreed to provide support to members who may be having trouble understanding what the review was all about. Next meeting of the SDP Planning Committee is scheduled for Thursday, February 24th at 1 p.m. The Employment and Economic Development Working Group of the SDP ends the Employment Coordination position. The Employment and Economic Development Working Group is one of the four priority areas of the Regent Park Social Development Plan. The committee comprises of TCHC residents, market residents, service providers, and grassroots groups meets monthly. The February 15, 2022 meeting of the EED Working Group was facilitated by the new TCHC co-chair Ismail Afra. Ismail was supported by Gail Lynch, the market resident co-chair. One of the city-funded initiatives of the Employment and Economic Working Group was to hire a coordinator to implement the research recommendations from the EED Community Research Report that was released in the fall of 2021. Among the roles of the coordinator was to strengthen the employment and economic tables presence in the community to increase resident awareness and ability to connect with employment opportunities, programs, and services. 
At the meeting, Michael, representing the project trustee from Yon Street Mission, announced that the EED coordinator who was carrying out this project will not be continuing in the position. Michael informed the group that the role will be reviewed prior to rehiring. No information was forthcoming on why the position was ended due to confidentiality issues. Following Michael's announcement, Gail Lynch announced her interest in starting a women's entrepreneurship women's group. The group will be focused on supporting women residents of Regent Park interested in entrepreneur activities. Gail announced that she will begin outreaching for members. Ismail Afra announced that the EED working group with support from service providers submitted a $200,000 application to the MedCal Foundation in support of employment and entrepreneurship related initiatives. The results of the application will be known in April. There were three presentations made at the EED meeting, one from Tridel about employment, training and scholarship opportunities, one from the Center for Learning and Development about employment training and skills development targeted at immigrant women from Regent Park and around the city, and one from the Evaluation and Benchmark Committee. The EED Working Group meets on the third Tuesday of each month from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Report of the February 15th, 2022 Regent Park Executive Directors Meeting. The Executive Directors Network, also known as the ED Network, is comprised of executive directors and senior decision makers of community organizations that serve Regent Park. The network meets monthly. The February 14th meeting was facilitated by Jim Nason, a senior manager of St. Jude's Community Homes. Jim is one of the co-chairs of the network along with Greg Gary, the executive director of K-Club. After an update on the impact of COVID-19 on services, the network revisited its terms of reference. One revision was made acknowledging the ED director's network's continuing support of the SDP. Following an amendment Greg Gary from Kiwani's Boys and Girls Club and the ED Director Chair of the SDP gave an update on the Social Development Plan. It was mentioned that both the City and the SDP Planning Table is undertaking an internal review of the yearly funds allocated by the City. Angie Peters, the executive director of Young Street Mission gave a high level update of the work the mediation team of the ED Directors Network was doing to support the work of RPNA and TCHC. In response to a request that Lindsay Jackson and Ismail Afra made to the ED Directors Network at a previous meeting, and she suggested that similar work could be offered to the SDP. The next ag agenda item was devoted to a discussion on how the network should be structured in order to be more effective in carrying out its action plans. During the discussion, it was acknowledged that many of the same members on the ED Directors Network also sit on a number of different tables, including the Downtown East Network, the Ontario Health Network, the Downtown East Vaccine Engagement, and as a result, there was much duplication of information. As part of the discussion, the group explored appointing different members to represent the ED Directors Network at various tables and reporting back to the network with information. 
The group also explored returning to the working committees that were formed prior to the disruption of the COVID-19 pandemic. It was agreed that the chairs would consider the points made in the discussions and propose a plan for the next month's meeting. The meeting ended with an update by Serena Newdale from the neighborhood group on youth initiatives involving youth empowering youth. Moss Park subway construction to take seven to 10 years. Sudden and unprecedented changes provoke Moss Park community to mobilize around planned redevelopments to the area. The Toronto downtown east side is experiencing massive changes. The Regent Park revitalization is perhaps the most widely known. And now the latest area to succumb to the redevelopment is Moss Park. Metrolinx announced that there will be a new subway station in Moss Park. The subway station is part of a major series of infrastructure projects intended to install a new transit, the Ontario Line, the Lynx Ontario Place, and the Ontario Science Centre. 15 stops, 15.6 kilometers, 30 minutes from end to end. The subway station will be located at the northwest corner of Queen Street East and Chevron Street. A disruption of seven to ten years to an area that is already struggling could have far-reaching consequences and a desperate effort has ensued to however possible mitigate the damage to the park and the neighborhood and to find meaningful social changes to counter the impacts of a construction project that will fundamentally alter neighborhood for possibly a decade. As Councillor Christine Wontam, who attended the Moss Park Community Benefits Coalition meeting, explained, the Metrolinx project came as a huge surprise to the community's vision of redevelopment. The revitalization of park, we had to put it on pause temporarily until we understood what was the Ontario line and the Moss Park station as being proposed, what was it gonna to do to our neighborhood? So what we know is that you'll see a little blue line there and that little blue line uh, is almost half the park and they call that the temporary staging area. So the, um, the transit agency, Metrolinx, is going to take over half the park and they're going to be building a tunnel because they have to put the tunnel underneath for the subway uh, head station uh, right on the south side of the park, which is facing Queen Street. And then they plan to build the station, a brand new subway station called Moss Park Station, right at the corner of Queen and Sherburne. As you can imagine, that was not what the city was anticipating when we were coming, getting ready to come back out to you with our new vision, uh, with the budget request that was already approved. So we had to put it on pause and I've spent the last few months trying to get Metrolinx to shrink the footprint, meaning that blue line um, is now halfway along the park, but originally, if you can believe it, they wanted the entire park. So they wanted the park from Girard um, down to, uh, to, to Queen Street. Uh, and of course that was not on for us. So we negotiated half the park as opposed to the entire park, um, but they will still have to have impact. What this also means is that all the trees along Queen Street are gonna be uh, chopped down. So they, they have an arborist report, which is basically a report that tells you the health of a tree they have said that it's going to have to take place. They're going to take it down and, um, and then they're going to replace it. Unfortunately, the project is estimated to take approximately seven years to complete and it may take 10 years. Some of the key issues that have arise from the coalition's community engagement to date includes number one, impacts to Moss Park, which will limit park access for community members during construction. Two, environmental concerns. Three, community benefits. Four, impacts to local businesses. Five, neighborhood improvements and social development plan. The purpose of the Moss Park Coalition meeting is to provide you with more details about all of the above. Answer any questions you might have, hear your thoughts, feedback, 
and make sure that all residents and businesses in the Moss Park community have the information they need to be part of these important decisions. Toronto City Council has approved a $15 billion operating budget for 2022. Toronto City Council approved a 2022 operating budget of $14.99 billion and a 10-year capital budget and plan of $46.61 billion. The budgets continue to address the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and the financial challenges that it has created preserve existing services consistent with public health guidelines, prioritize initiative to support economic recovery, and make environmentally and socially responsible investments. The 2022 budgets ensure the City of Toronto will continue to deliver essential and responsive city services during the pandemic, invest in public health, including the largest and most successful vaccination campaign in the country, invest in shelters, including provision for physical distancing, accelerate transformational work to deliver affordable and supportive housing, invest in transit, to keep Toronto moving and equitable, including a TTC fare freeze and a plan to restore TTC service to pre-pandemic levels. Support Toronto's economic recovery with an emphasis on small businesses. Expand digital services for residents and business. Implement long-term care reform initiatives and expand the Seniors Services Unit to continue providing the highest quality care. During the meeting, City Council approved several initiatives to finalize the budget, including expediting the delivery of 300 additional housing opportunities for people experiencing homelessness who are currently in the shelter system, providing more funding support for the strong neighborhood strategy and community partnership and investment program grants, providing support to the 519 Community Center, providing additional funding for hygiene products for users of shelters, respite sites, and drop-ins. And now we go with Javin Hawk with a report on COVID-19 and vaccination update. Thank you, now we will continue on the COVID-19 and vaccination update. Ontario youth between ages of 12 and 17 are now eligible to get the third dose of COVID-19 vaccine. Individuals in the age group will be able to book appointments through the provincial booking system or call center. Select pharmacies will also be administrating the vaccine to youth. Ontario government is also lifting up capacity limits in indoor settings ahead of schedule and will scrap the province's proof of vaccination system on March 1st. In two weeks, March 1st, the province said remaining capacity limits will be removed in all indoor settings and the government will no longer require people to show proof of vaccine to enter non-essential businesses. Masking rules will remain in effect, but the province said a specific timeline for lifting ma masking mandates will be communicated at a later date. The worst of Omicron fueled COVID-19 infections in Ontario is behind us. Chief Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Kieran Moore said, I do think that the peak in risk and the peak in activity of Omicron is behind us. Moore said that there is still an existing risk related to catching COVID-19, 
which is why health measures like masking in public spaces are still in place. However, he said he and his team will co continue to monitor transmission trends to determine when the mandates can be lifted. And now Fred Alvarado and Javen Hawk will present events and jobs in Regent Park. Now for events and jobs in Regent Park. Fred Victor at 40 Oak Street will be holding free drop-in and by appointment income tax clinics for those eligible. The clinics will run every Tuesday and Thursday from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. The morning slots are for drop-ins while afternoon slots are by appointment only. These free income tax clinics will run starting March 1st until April 31st. To be eligible, you must meet, meet a certain criteria for total family income. For one person, it is a total income up to $40,000. Two people, it is $50,000. From then on, add $2,500 for each additional family member to calculate eligibility. Appointments can be booked through the drop-in program staff on-site at 40 Oak Street. You can also contact Masita by phone at 647-580-9319 or email edwin at ehuang at fredvictor.org for more information or, for, or to book an appointment. The Center for Advancing the Interests of Black People and Toronto Community Housing invites you to celebrate Black History Month or roses that grew from concrete. You can join this virtual celebration to honor the contributions of current and former black tenants who have fostered positive change and planted the seeds of long-lasting impact in our communities. This event will take place on Sunday, February 27th, 2022, from 3 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. The first 75 people to register for the event will have dinner delivered to their homes through a food catering service. You can attend the virtual event either through your web browser or by phoning in. You can register by sending an email to the center team at the center at torontohousing.ca or call a man area at 437-220-2704. You can also scan the QR code by your phone to fill out the registration form. All registrants will be entered into a draw to win prices. If you have any questions about the event, email the center team at the center at torontohousing.ca or visit torontohousing.ca slash C-A-V-R. Calling all Regent Park entrepreneurs. Join the Regent Park Community Celebration Entrepreneur Market. This will take place on March 23rd from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. at Daniel Spectrum Building and CSI Community Living Room. Any local vendor looking to sell their wares to the community, food, crafts, sewing, etc. It's only $15 honorarium plus guaranteed sell amount. Food vendors, space limited to 10 vendors. You can apply by sending an email with your name, contact information, and product information to denise at socialinnovation.ca. The deadline is Sunday, March 6th at 11.30 p.m. Immigrant Women's Integration Program Free short-term programming for immigrant and newcomer women interested in community leadership to complete focus training and receive certification. This program pilot will consist of two packages, offering two short courses each for a total of 22 hours of programming. Package 1, Mental Health First Aid and Mindfulness Coaching throughout April 2022. Package 2, the escalating potentially violent situations and standard first aid and CPR throughout April and May 2022. The delivery of the program is blend of online class, in-class, and self-study. The length is 22 hours total, and you can apply at the application link, and the deadline is February 28, 2022. For more information, email at info at tccld.org or you can call 647-493-2462.
Press 1 for Program and Registration. Free Academic Upgrade and Skills Program. This program is suitable for people who wants to improve their reading, writing, math, computer, and other basic skills. Did not finish high school and want to prepare for their GED or transitioning to post-secondary. Wants to develop skills for employability opportunities, including apprenticeships. Wants to develop skills to enhance personal confidence and civic engagement with their community. This will take place online using the Virtual Social Change Hubs platform. This will take place from Monday through Thursday from 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. The length of the time in the program is individualized based on the learner. For eligibility, a resident of Ontario and at least 19 years old, further eligibility will be determined when applying. You can apply anytime at the application link. For more information, email info at tccld.org or phone 647-493. To 462, press 1 for program and registration. Food Processing Essential Skills. FPE is a free virtual program for workplace and manufacturing training for those interested in obtaining employment in the food service and hospitality industries in partnership with Food Processing Skills Canada. There is a nationally recognized certificate issued upon completion. This will take place online using the Virtual Social Change Hubs platform. The length of the program will be 40 hours of online in-class and self-study over four weeks. A fifth week is optional depending on the participant's goal path. You can apply at the application link. For more information, email info at tccld.org or phone 647-493-2462, press 1 for program and registration. Elevate Talent Tech and Business Sector Training, CLND, is a community partner of Elevate Talent, a free 90-day tech training and job placement program for underrepresented talent. Elevate Talent is a job development program designed to train and match individuals seeking opportunities in high-demand careers with organizations eager to hire diverse talent in Canada's business and tech sectors. Belong to an underrepresented community, Black, Indigenous, Person of Color, 2S, LGBTQ+, Women, Newcomer, etc. Located in the Greater Toronto and Hamilton area. Eligible to work in Canada. Looking for training to land full-time employment in a tech or innovation role. The deadline is March 6, 2022. You can apply at the application link. For more information, you can call Blessing Diga at 647-493-2462 extension 127 or email at blessing.diga at tccld.org. Now for jobs. The City of Toronto Parks, Forestry and Recreation is holding a handful of virtual free job information sessions for positions in the spring and summer 2022 seasons. The info sessions will help participants understand the different jobs available, what they can expect in these jobs, how the application process will be, and provide tips or interview preparations, answering any specific questions interested participants may have. Recreation jobs will offer seasonal and year-round part-time opportunities with flexible work hours and quality work teams in a unionized environment. The virtual information session includes spring-summer 2022 jobs, aquatic-specific jobs, sports-specific jobs, and fitness-specific. And they began running this part Thursday, February 17th, and will run through to April 4th. For more information on specific dates, times, and registration, please visit www.toronto.ca slash recjobs and sign up on Eventbridge. That was all for events and jobs in Regent Park. Hope to see you there. And that's all for today's show. My name is Murphy Brown. My co-hosts are Fred Alvarado and Javen Hawk. We would also like to thank our team of researchers that contributed to this week's show. And from our studios at Focus Media Arts Centre, 
thanks for watching and see you next week. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And when you do subscribe, hit the little notification bell so you never miss out on any of our content. If you'd also like more, you can find us on our other social media platforms. And if you want even more, you can look at our website.